Good morning and or evening rather, excuse me. Welcome to the Board of Commissioners meeting for January 27th, 2014. As is our tradition, prior to calling the meeting to order, we have the invocation and we have the Pledge of Allegiance. Today the invocation will be presented by Donald Zelmar from Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints on Holt Road. Followed by the pledge from Deputy Michael Seaman, who has been employed with the Cobb County Sheriff's Office for just over four years. I mean, he is a member of the K-9 team, but now is part of field operations. Uh, of note and of significance, and very much appreciated, sir, is that Deputy Seaman served eight years in the Army as a combat engineer and served two tours in Iraq, and we're glad you're back safe, sir. So those that wish to do so, wait a minute, before I even do that, we have some Girl Scouts that want to help the help the deputy this morning. Oh. Look at them. Pack 703 from Kennesaw. Would that be you, gentlemen? No. No, that wouldn't be? No. Okay, let me start over there. We have some young boys from Pack 703 who would like to assist the deputy seaman in doing the Pledge of Allegiance. So for those who wish to, please stand for the pledge and the invocation. Our Father in heaven, we thy residents and members of Cobb County come together this evening grateful for the opportunity to be a part of this Cobb Commissioner's meeting. We pray that thy spirit will be with us this, this evening as we are here for the business of Cobb County to be done. We're grateful for thy blessings upon the residents and members and so forth of Cobb County and the state of Georgia and the United States. We're grateful for the sacrifices that have been made for those that protect and serve and for those that protect us from the things that are going on that are not good. We pray that thy spirit will be with us here that, that peace and calm and common sense might prevail. And we ask and say these things humbly in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Thank you, Mr. Zentlar. Thank you, Deputy Seaman, and thank you, PAC 703. Appreciate you being here. We'll now call the meeting to order. In our agenda books, tab one, tab two, tab three were covered this afternoon in our work session. So we begin our evening tonight with tab four. We have two presentations. The first is to present a certificate of recognition to Mr. Brandt and Mr. Ingert, Boy Scouts from 1776 in recognition of earning the rank of Eagle Scout. If those gentlemen and their families and friends and Scout Masters and girlfriends and want to come up, we appreciate it. Good evening. How are you? You did bring your girlfriends with you. Come on up, guys. Come up here. Face the crowd. We're glad you're all here this morning. Which one is Cameron? Hey, Cameron. So Cameron crossed into troop and the, crossed over into the troop in 2009 from Pack 121, where he earned the Arrow of Light. He has worked through the ranks, earning 21 merit badges along with his eagle has 83 nights of camping and over 150 miles logged uh, hiking. High adventure trips include a trek at Philmont Scout Ranch, a sail at Sea Base, and a trip to the 2010 National Jamboree. He is an order, ordeal member, did I get that right? Of the oral order of the arrow. Troop leadership roles, he is a patrol leader, a den chief, an assistant senior patrol leader, and Cameron is a junior at Lasseter High School where he is very active with the marching band. What do you play? Percussion. Percussion. Very cool. Tell us about your ego project and the people that are with you. This is my mother, 
and uh, my Eagle project was to help a satellite church just in the area. And what we did was renovate an entire volleyball court, tearing the old one out, replacing it, and with the replacement, adding a drainage, new netting, and new sand for the church's members to play on. Are you the first scout in your family? Second scout? Who got? Who was the other scout? Chase, your brother. Was he an eagle as well? Congratulations to your family. You must be very proud, Mom. So that leaves Christopher. Christopher has earned 31 merit badges along with his eagle. He has logged 65 nights of camping, is an ordeal member of the Order of the Arrow. His leadership roles include patrol leader, Scribe, Den Chief, Leave No Trace Trainer, and Troop Webmaster. Chris was awarded the BSA, the Boy Scouts of America National Heroism Award for saving his father's life. Is that you? That's me. That's you. So evidently he's good at what he does. Huh? Good at what he does. I want to hear about that. And Chris is a senior at Cal High School, so tell us about your dad and tell us about your project. Um, over the summer, uh, the year before my freshman year of high school, at about 7.30 in the morning, I woke up to my mom yelling for me, and I came, and he was on the floor, so I did what I've been trained to do, and I did CPR on him for only a few minutes, but it was enough, so I've been told. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my project. Uh, for my project, I built battlefield location markers up at Kennesaw Mountain National Battlefield Park, and I built nine signs and put them at various locations. There were a few confed or more Confederate than Union, but they were from both sides. Thank you, and congratulations, sir. Yes. Uh, I owe my life to my son. On June 7, 2011, uh, I fell out of bed in the morning uh, after attending a Scoutmaster's meeting night before. Uh, I was completely, uh, essentially, I, I had actually died. Uh, my wife was there in the room with me, fortunately. I had not gone down to make coffee yet. She uh, dialed 911. Chris was 14 years old at the time, sound asleep down the hall. Uh, he woke to his mom's screams for help, coming. He, he came running. Between the two of them, they rolled me over on my back. And Christopher did CPR for probably about four or five minutes. Uh, the, uh, the emergency services from Firehouse uh, 16 responded very quickly. The 911 operator did their job fantastically. I, I said, aside from the misfortune of the illness, uh, everything was blessed for me because I had my family there. Uh, I had had a heart attack, which went into almost immediately sudden cardiac death. And it was determined that I was actually dead at least 12 minutes. Uh, I went to bed Monday night. I was uh, completely unconscious through this whole thing. I woke up in uh, Kennest uh, Kennestone Hospital on Thursday not knowing what had happened. I remember that moment of waking up and I carry a note over my heart from the nurse that the nurse left for me. That said, Mr. Engert, you're in Kennestone Hospital. You've had a heart attack. Uh, you've had open heart surgery. The surgery went, went very well. I ended up with a quadruple bypass. And uh, the last line said, your son saved your life. Uh, sudden cardiac death has a 1% survival rate. So that attests to the training that Christopher received through Boy Scouts. Uh, my family kept their head. This 14-year-old kid did CPR professionally, as professionally as anybody could possibly do. And uh, I owe both him, both him and my wife, uh, I owe them my life. I want to thank uh, Com uh, Commissioner Lee also for recognizing Christopher uh, three years ago uh, at, this, uh, at this meeting. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Great group of guys, wouldn't you say? Yeah. All right, we've got future leaders here. Congratulations. We're going to give a
Great story. Um, great testament to the training Boy Scouts receive. Item two is to present a proclamation to Cobb Mentoring Matters to be led by Commissioner Cupid. Yes, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Tonight I have the privilege of recognizing January as National Mentoring Month and have with me today Ms. Mary Ellen Gomes of Cobb's Mentoring Matter, excuse me, Cobb's Mentoring Matters program, which is in Cobb County Schools. Cobb Mentoring Matters is in its third year in Cobb County Schools, and staff and volunteers work tirelessly to build a community where every youth experiences nurturing one-on-one -on -one relationships and support. Research shows that mentoring programs are effective in combating school violence, discipline problems, substance abuse, incarceration, and truancy. A young person is five times more likely to graduate if he or she has a me meaningful relationship with an adult. Youth matched with caring adults through mentoring programs are 46% <coughs> less likely to use illegal drugs and 52% less likely to skip school. Mentoring is a proven cost-effective investment because every one dollar invested yields a three dollar return to society. Nonetheless, there is still a mentoring gap right here in Cobb County between the availability of this program and the number of young people who are in need. Today we take time to honor the men and women who staff and volunteer with Cobb Mentoring Matters, helping our youth reach their full potential. We encourage others to get involved and support this vital program. So we have this proclamation for the program today, and we, the Cobb County Board of Commissioners, do hereby honor the men and women who staff and volunteer with Cobb Mentoring Matters, helping our youth reach our Full, reach their full potential like we just had the opportunity to observe. We encourage others to get involved and support these vital programs because mentoring encourages educational achievement, reduces juvenile delinquency, and improves quality of life. So with that, thank you, Ms. Gomes, for all of your efforts with this program. And if you could share with us a few words about what you do and what opportunities are available. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, as uh, Commissioner Cupid, has, Cupid said, I am the mentor coordinator for the Cobb County School District. I'm a social worker within the department, and I recruit, train, and place mentors throughout Cobb County. And I can tell you we have only hit the tip of the tip of the tip of the iceberg. Cobb County is one of the richest counties, not in, and I mean rich in in the ability of people to, uh, of all different faiths, all different professions, to come forward and spend one hour a week. That's all we ask is one hour a week to spend at a school at your choice. We have 112 schools in the district. And we have uh, mentors that range from ages 18 to 84 years old. And I will tell you that it is the most rewarding thing to watch a mentor and a mentee um, actually connect. Everyone in this room has the ability to give something to a child. When you see what's going on outside, what you do does matter. So our, our theme this year is be someone special, be someone who matters to someone who matters. So thank you. Thank you. Can we give Mary Ellen a round of applause for her work and this proclamation is yours. Thank you. That'll take us to tab five, tab four, rather, excuse me. No, we did tab four, tab five. I'm sorry, Mr. Hankerson, County Manager, Stadium update, SunTrust Park update. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Board. As a part of our agenda and as a director by the Board, we have a standing agenda item that gives an update on SunTrust Park at our second meeting in the month. Uh, this is the site here that of uh, SunTrust Park. Go to the next one. And I think as you continue to see, and you can go to the next one, 
Uh, they're now, uh, and I'll talk about some of that, but I think if you go by now every week or so, you will see noticeable changes on this particular site. So go to the next. Stadium site contracts to date on the stadium site, and there's other developments, the Braves development. This is just the stadium site of seven, eight million, so far, 53 million of contracts in Cobb. We're on track and on schedule for the April 2017 opening. Caissons are being drilled. Uh, there are a number of cranes on the site, and as I uh, understand from this photo, we've got a lot more cranes on site. The circulator study is underway. DOT is pleased with the progress at this time. Uh, we complete the, completed the pre-bed meeting for the multi-use bridge. Uh, the Georgia Supreme Court is scheduled to hear oral arguments on February the 3rd. American Builders 2017 encouraged prime tier and sub-tier local minority women uh, and disadvantaged business contracts and vendor utilization uh, on these uh, pro bid proposals. Uh, bid package number three have been received. Uh, they're being evaluated. Uh, bid package number four, RFP Q, is expected in March. And this is where you'll start seeing some of the more activity in the proposals and evaluation. To date, uh, AB 2017 has participated in nine outreach events reaching over 1,300 people. AB 2017 will present at February the 12th Brave Supply Diversity Expo at Turner Field. Uh, we have at our uh, Senior Center another outreach on the 10th uh, at our Powder Spring Center with American Builders. This will be our third outreach program in that area as well. This is one at Fuller Park. We had it the past weekend, great turnout. Uh, with Eastside Baseball, uh, the Braves is part of the activity, had a number of events. Uh, we had a large, large turnout. But at this one, uh, just as they engaged, the Braves has invested over $200,000 in non in Cobb to date. And this is part of that. Uh, Mountain View Elementary in, in their caravan and outreach program, this is some activities at the Mountain View Elementary School. And they've come in engaging a lot of speeches going on in Cobb. They're really engaging in Cobb, uh, even though they're not scheduled to open here to 2017. Um, they've really um, came into Cobb and really, really engaged. With that, Mr. Chairman, that is a quick update. There's a lot of information, but a lot of things are happening, and glad to see things moving on. Terrific. Thank you for the update. Are there any questions or comments? From the board, Commissioner Cupid. Thank you, Chairman. I just wanted to reiterate for those who are here in the audience or watching this um, by TV that our final bid package is bid package four. So if you do have interest in working on the stadium, you need to get involved in this process. And as was shared, the issue date for that is early of March 2015. And the builder, American Builders, has a website where you can sign up and get more information and possibly partner with other um, larger contractors. And that website, you may have had it on one of your slides, is American Builders 27. It's down there at the RSVP for, right. and for any of our events, you can RSVP on that site. And it's www.americanbuilders2017.com. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That'll take us to tab six, community development. Mr. Hozak, I believe you have some comments to make prior to going into agenda item number one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate the opportunity uh, to clarify an issue, and I'll first uh, apologize to the Board of Commissioners and to the county manager. Um, there was a legal ad that was published in the Marietta Daily Journal that was advertising a public hearing for this evening. Um, actually, uh, I'll take responsibility for that. Uh, I think I sent that prematurely um, and got a little bit ahead of both the county manager and the board. Um, I think it was around the holidays. I was trying to make sure that we weren't going to miss anything, but quite honestly, I should not have sent it when I did. Uh, felt obligated to bring that to the board's attention as well as uh, requesting that you announce that if there is anyone here tonight uh, that intended to speak, um, that indeed it was an error uh, for staff to 
have submitted the legal ad and provide somebody an opportunity to speak on the particular advertisement if someone so desired, sir. And to, to clarify, that would have been a public hearing to cons uh, basically consider or announce when there would have been an anticipated consultant that may come on board where we anticipated spending more than $100,000, sir. Thank you. Um, so noted, he announced the error in that ad, that public hearing for that particular item will not be heard tonight. So if anyone is here tonight for that specific hearing, uh, it will not be occurring tonight and uh, we'll, we'll address that in the future as, as it's appropriate. Now we go to tab number one to conduct the first public hearing to solicit comments on the input of the amendments of the official code of Cobb County. That will be Mr. Johnson, sir, and I apologize to the board and to the county manager for that. Thank you. Mr. Johnson. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Dana Johnson. I am uh, the Deputy Director of Community Development, uh, and I am here to open the first of three public hearings regarding the proposed amendments to the Cobb County Code. Uh, we'll be looking at chapters 2, 6, 1850, 54, 62, 70, 78, 83, 102, 106, and 134. All of these potential amendments have been suggested by various commissioners throughout the course of the year. In addition to that, potential amendments have been suggested by staff to provide clarity uh, to comply with changes at the state level. Um, as a way to brief the board on um, what is in this package, all of the potential amendments have been summarized numerically. And we will start with Chapter 2, 2-161 to 2-171. These are minor clarifications on formatting and extension of the current version of the Economic Development Ordinance for an additional year. That can be found on page 2. On 2-180, a new code uh, creating a permitting process for commercial film enterprises is suggested on pages 3 to 5. 2-230 to 2-36, uh, this change is being removed from the Code Amendment package for additional research. If you're interested, that is located on page 5 to 8. Uh, code 6-1 is to establish a new definition for non-profit private, non -profit private clubs in the alcohol ordinance seen in page 8. In 18-53, 18-83, and 18-98, these are all references in the building code, making sure it's properly annotated, all shown on page 9. Uh, chapter 18-5. 358, this is an amendment to the blasting ordinance so that it can become more in line with state standards and state regulations. That is found between pages 9 to 12. Then on page 50-258, clarification on the county's exem existing exemption from the noise ordinance found on page 13. On 54-59, clarification on the maintenance of fire hydrants. That can be found on page 13. Code section 54-96 is clarification on the fire protection system requirements uh, located on page 13, while 54-100 is clarification on the definitions of a licensed alarm contractor found on page 13. 54-101 is enhancement of the licensing requirements for these fire alarm contractors. That's on pages 13 and page 14. In section 62-33 are references used by Cobb Douglas Public Health. Uh, that's found on page 14. On 70-26 to 70-37, these are establishing new provisions and clarifications as well as a new fee schedule for the alarm systems ordinance, the false alarm ordinance. That's on pages 14 to 22. Then on 83-9, this is clarification on the weed control ordinance. That is found on page 22. On 102-92 is clarification on the litter control ordinance found on page 22. 106-2 is modification of the requirements for street numberings of buildings. That's found on page 23. 
Uh, then we have 106, 162 to 106, 163. These are some modifications to the requirements for creating new pedestrian street lights. That's found on page 23 and on page 24. Getting into the zoning code, 131 4-1 has three new definitions found on page 24. It's the definition of creating a new farm and garden supply store, uh, taking the existing definition for flea markets in the business license code and transferring that into the um, into the zoning ordinance, and then establishing a new definition for hotel suites. Also in 134-1 is a revision to the definition of townhouse dwelling unit uh, to make sure that the same minimum building requirements required for single-family residential are also included for single-family attached. 134-121-A7E, this change is being removed from the Code of Event Package for additional research. It's on page 25. 134-121-E1, this is clarification on the time frame required for rejection or deletion of zoning applications on when they can be can reapply for consideration. That's on page 26. On 134-122-3, that is a change is being removed from the Code Amendment Package for additional research again on page 26. 134-123-A3, this change is also being removed for additional research. 134-123-B, this is modification to the actions of the Planning Commission regarding um, recommendations that can be made and a and the authorities regarding the holding of cases. That's on page 27. 134, 162 is amendment to the R12 code to allow applications for rezoning again. That's on page 27. 134, 162 also includes RA4 to allow additional uh, new zoning applications, also on page 27, and clarification on the suburban condo code regarding the type of residential uses allowed there, page 27. 134, 162 uh, also includes um, the RA6 to allow new zoning applications found on page 27. 134, 162 also has clarification on the RSL code regarding the age of tenants to conform with fire housing standards found on page 27. 134-168 is a new code uh, that the Board of Commissioners could apply stipulations to properties that are determined to have an undue burden on county resources, found on page 29. Um, 134-193, 134-194, 134-195, 134-196, and 134-197 are all clarifications to the outdoor storage, found on page 29, 30, and 31. 134, 197, and 134, 198 are also clarifications on the outdoor storage, also found on page 31. Uh, then the 134, 199 is again the amendment for R12, allowing zoning applications, page 31. Finally, 134, 199, again clarification on store storage, page 31 and 32. 134, 200 is clarification on the outdoor storage, again page 32. 134.201 is the amendment for, to allow applications for R12, found on page 32. 134.201, clarification outdoor storage, page 32. 134.201.1, this is an amendment to include a maximum pervious surface in the PRD code, which does not currently have one. That's on page 33. On 134.201.1 is, again, the clarification on the outdoor storage, found on page 33. 134.201.2 is again the same clarification on outdoor storage, page 33. 134.201.3, clarification on the types of homes allowed in the suburban condo district, page 33. 134.201.3 is again the outdoor storage, which is, uh, have been repetitive a number of times. 134.202 is a revision to the SA6, uh, so that it could um, be used as an infill category in the low and medium density residential districts, page 34. 134202, 134203.2, 134203.3, 134204, 134205. Clarification on the outdoor storage ordinance found on pages 34 and 35. Again, 134206, 134207, 208, 210, and 211. Clarification on outdoor storage, pages 35, 36, and 37. 
134.213 and 134.214, Clarification of Outdoor Storage, page 37. 134.215 is the removal of the hotel suite definition um, from each separate zoning category, found on page 37. And then again, outdoor storage for 215 and 216, found on page 38. 217 is also clarification of outdoor storage, found on page 38. 218 is, the re again, the removal of the hotel suite definition, found on page 39 and 40. 218 is clarification on the outdoor storage for 218, found on page 40. 220 is the removal of the hotel suites, uh, found on page 39. And then 220 is, again, remove um, clarification on the outdoor storage, found on page 39. Clarification outdoor storage for 221 and 221.1, found on page 39. For 134.222, removal of the hotel suite definition found on pages 39 and 40, and then clarification on the outdoor storage for 222 found on page 40. On 134.223, this is the, additional of, the addition of accessory uses into the OS category found on page 40. Again, for 223, this is the removal of the hotel suite as previously mentioned on page 41, and clarification on outdoor storage found on pages 41 and 42. For 134.224 is removal of the hotel suite definition on page 42. 134.224 is also removal of the outdoor store clarification on outdoor storage found on page 42. 134.225 has the removal of the hotel suite definition on page 42. 226 is also the removal of the hotel suite definition. 227 is the removal of the hotel suite definition as well as 228. Those are found on pages 42 and 43. 134.267 is clarification that height requirements for fences and walls are the same. It's found on pages 43 and 44. 134.271 is the establishment of a maximum impervious surface for religious facilities so that they are treated as similar to other assembly type uses found on page 44. 134.272 is the removal of the requirements for a slup to park on top of a roof of a structure found on page 44. 134.228 is the alteration of the parking requirements for light automotive repair establishments to clarify that all on-site vehicles are to be placed in a parking space that meets the county parking requirements. That's on pages 45 and 46. 134.331 is addition of language to prohibit additional wall signage through creative window design found on page 45. 134.316A3 is clarification that the zoning administrator can extend the temporary sign for individuals whose sign in advertising has been impacted by county road projects. 134.372 is alteration of the sign permit requirements to clarify that drive through restaurants and car wash menu boards are regulated in the same manner. That is found on page 46. Uh, and with that, Mr. Chairman, I'll be happy to answer any questions from the board, uh, receive any comments from the board, and ask that you please open the first public hearing for consideration. Before we do that, um, this is the first public hearing. Go through the process for us so we all understand that, please. Yes, sir. Very good. Um, this is the first of three public hearings. Uh, we are required by public here uh, by county code to hold two public hearings for modifications of uh, the Cobb County Code. In addition to that, the Planning Commission makes recommendations um, on Section 134, the zoning ordinance, as required by code. Usually on the second meeting, the um, community development staff will come up and present the recommendations on the Planning Commission, which would then be an additional public hearing for the board to receive comments uh, from the community. Anybody is welcome to um, uh, to speak on any of the c proposed code <laughs> amendments, and I would look to uh, Ms. Dance is telling me that it's three minutes per speaker for each person who wishes to speak. Thank you. But at this point, we'll open the public hearing for proposed amendments as presented for the Cobb County Code. Anybody wishing to speak, come forward. You have three minutes, please. Not everybody at once.
Good evening, commissioners and uh, Mr. Chairman. I am Doug Davis, president of the East Cobb Civic Association. I would like to talk today about the zoning district amendments, R12, RA4, and RA6. That would be pages 27, 28, 31, 32, and 34. These zoning districts have been in a passive status since 1996, and the proposed zoning amendments will make them active that developers can apply for. To better understand the impact of reactivating these zoning districts, I have made comparisons to active zoning districts, concentrating on lot size, units per acre, and maximum impervious surface coverage. Since each development is unique, it's impossible to address every possible effect that a zoning regulation can have on every development. So I have used the maximums and the minimums as stated in the code for my comparisons. R12 takes a 12,000 square foot lot development out of RA5. This reduces the units allowed per acre and then impervious surface coverage from 40% to 35%. We have no objection to the R12 amendments. RA4 puts a zoning district between RA5 and R12 even though the lot size is just 1,400 square feet more and R, than RA5, it does reduce the maximum units per acre from five to four. <clears throat> this may not have any effect on a small infill one-sided development, but it will make a difference in a larger development. We have no objection to RA4 amendments. RA6, a zoning district with just 800 square foot less lot size, one more unit per acre, and 5% more impervious surface coverage per lot than RA5. <clears throat> for this to become available for an infill development would be a mistake. This creates approximately 2,740 more impervious surface square footage coverage per acre, a 20% increase. <clears throat> also, who would request RA5 if you could step up to RA6 and get 5% five, 5 more uh, impervious surface. So in conclusion, the ECCA has no objection to the R12 and RA4 code amendments. The ECCA is opposed to the RA6 amendments. It can be too much on too little. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Next speaker, please. Good evening, Commissioners and Mr. Chairman. My name is Jill Flam, and I'm here to present ECCA's additional comments on the code amendments. With regard to Section 134-123, Section B, page 27, we agree with the recommendation to delete deferral and add withdrawal with prejudice to the list of actions the Planning Commission can take. We, however, recommend that the next sentence concerning the number of times the Planning Commission can hold a case remain as currently written. We find that the limit on the number of holds encourages the applicant to come forward with a flushed out application to begin with rather than a back of the napkin idea. With a limited amount of time that a petition can be held for more information, a fully formulated plan needs to be developed quickly and conversations with the surrounding community scheduled in a timely fashion. It also encourages the opposition to make time to attend these meetings and get organized. The added next sentence also concerns us. How can the Board of Commissioners direct the Planning Commission to move a case forward if they have not heard the case yet? Will this require a full vote of the board? How will the commissioners who represent other districts be brought up to speed on the application without hearing the case? And will the opposition also be able to make their case? We recommend deleting this sentence until more specifics are available. With regard to section 134-273, item three, page 45, antennas and towers over 35 feet in height, we have a lot of questions. Where is this breakpoint located? Are they standard for every tower? Is the breakpoint distance measured from the ground? And under what circumstances will this tower break? What happens to the antennas on the tower when the tower breaks? If it is a pine tree, what happens to the branches? 
we were not able to find any information on the internet concerning breakpoints. Before we allow towers to be moved closer to residential areas and public, public right-of-ways than the height of the tower plus 10%, we recommend further study of what happens in these instances. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Next speaker, please. These are for cut amendment comments. Seeing and hearing none, the public hearing regarding code amendments is closed. The next public hearing meeting will be February 10th, at which time we'll take up these items again, correct? Yes, sir. On, on Yes, sir. February 10th, you will receive the recommendations from the Planning Commission on 134. Okay. Now, Dana, people don't have to wait to public hearings to comment, right? People are always welcome to um, email uh, myself. Um, or, or your elected representatives or the Planning Commission if you have any comments or concerns about any of the amendments that are contained here uh, in that are being presented today. Thank you. Any comments from the board at this point? Super, thank you. That takes us to item two. They'll conduct a public hearing for the Riverside Area Urban Development Plans. Dana. Yes, sir. Um, we had advertised to conduct a public hearing for the urban Riverside, Riverside Area Urban Redevelopment Plan. Uh, since it was advertised and it was placed in the agenda, we will ask the board to open a public hearing on that. Although I would make note before the public hearing is, occur, that would, is going to occur, that is the intention of uh, staff to ask for this item to be withdrawn. Um, in some, uh, during the time leading up to tonight's public meeting, We've received a number of comments and observations regarding the Riverside Redevelopment Plan. Uh, in light of some of the upcoming events that are going to be impacting um, your time and staff's time, particularly the, the retreats coming up and the uh, voluminous um, agenda for the zoning hearing in February, um, we, the ability for us to reach out to the community and to do additional education and outreach in that time frame is going to be problematic as it relates to trying to um, move this ahead at the end of February. Uh, as such, uh, staff would make a recommendation um, that to have an abundance of caution that you still hold your public hearing tonight on this, <coughs> but understand that this will not move forward as it's currently written in the agenda and that we would re-advertise and repost this uh, prior to it moving forward again in the future. Great, appreciate it. So at this point, we'll open the public hearing for the Riverside Area Urban Redevelopment Plan. This is done because we advertised and posted, and it was included in the agenda as an item for our book. Um, as you heard, this item will be deferred to a later date. But at this moment, the public hearing is open. Anyone wishing to speak on a Riverside Area Urban Redevelopment Plan, please come forward. There's three minutes for each speaker. Seeing and hearing none, the public hearing is closed. So, Commissioner, uh, you're you're making a recommendation. Commissioner, you you you're good with what they're recommending. Chairman, thank you. Yes, I am supportive of that and appreciate staff's consideration of the community's um, comments with respect to this item. That we just take a little bit more time to flesh that out prior to moving forward. Super. Okay. Now let's make a motion. Do we have it? Do we don't have to pull it? Do we? Or what do we have to do, Deborah? You need to withdraw it. Withdraw it. Do we need a motion to do that or we just do it? I don't believe you need a motion. Great. Okay. So we're going to withdraw that item for future consideration. Thank you, Dana. Yes, sir. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. It takes us to tab seven, our first public comment period. Sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Jill Flam.
Good evening, Commissioners and Mr. Chairman. My name is Jill Flam, and I'm Vice President Emeritus for ECCA. This new position in the organization gives me time to think about changes that would help not only us, but the community as a whole based on my experiences. Tonight, we would like to recommend some changes to the Cobb County online zoning variance analysis pages. As Commissioner Cupid said during the land use map amendment hearings, we speak a different language when it comes to zonings. R20, CCRC, SLUP, NRC mean very little to the average person. When they see a zoning variance or other business sign go up on a piece of property, they know some change is being proposed and they want to know what it means to them. If they remember the date on the sign, they can find information on this page. For example, on the Cobb County website. This is the February 2015 online zoning analysis page. Having the zoning information available on the website is a great time-saving tool and makes it easily available to the public. We realize not all governments have this available and we appreciate what the Cobb County staff has done to make this possible. Even numbering the OBI cases sequentially, which the zoning staff started doing last year, has eliminated the confusion of multiple OBIs carrying the same number during being heard in the same month. These are recommendations to make the site even more useful. The problem we are seeing with the information on this page is not with the cases that are scheduled to be heard for the first time in February, but those that have been continued or held. And this is true for the variance page also. Mm. Forgive me, Commissioner Ott, but I'm going to use three cases from your district that have been continued or held since 2014 as examples. To be fair, we have seen this happen in other districts as well. No, we haven't. Not that one. My, <laughs> my first example is OBI 35, originally scheduled to be heard in August of 2014. It is listed here again for February, so if someone saw the sign, they could easily find the case. What would make this listing even better would be if the address of the property or the street that it fronts on were part of the title so you wouldn't have to remember the OBI number and click through all the cases. My next example is Z61, originally scheduled to be heard in September, now scheduled for February. There is no information about the case on this page. There won't be until after the Planning Commission work session when the final zoning analysis are posted. But this page has been available for 38 days prior to this. You would have to know to go back to this page again prior to the Planning Commission hearing for information on this case. The original application and any staff analysis prior to December would also be useless as the site plan, stipulation letter, and staff comments have changed several times. We would recommend that the final zoning analysis from the last time a petition was scheduled to be heard in this case, December, be posted separately under preliminary analysis at the same time the new cases are posted for that month. This would give the community the latest information on that application in the month it is scheduled to be heard. Our final example is Z2, a case that is now entering its second year. There is no mention of the status of this case on this page. While it is not scheduled to be heard in February, the continuance changing the hearing date was granted in December. We recommend that a list of all continued or held cases that will not be heard in the current month be posted with their petition number included in the title at the same time as the new cases are posted for that month. Basically, an updated list like this that is included on the PC, BOC, and BZA agendas. Staff must prepare this for the commission meetings, so it is not adding another document to their caseload. Without this information, someone who just saw the number on the side and looked up the case in Feb February may mistakenly think that a tire store is being proposed for the Roswell Road property, as both petitions carry the same number. Our final request is that, like adding an address or street to the OBI names, we recommend doing the same to the final zoning analysis. This would also help quickly identify the location of petitions being heard that month. To summarize our recommendations, one, final zoning, variance, and other business items carry either the address of the property or the major street it fronts on in the title of the PDF for easy reference. Two, 
The final zoning variance analysis from the last month a continued or held case was heard be posted separately along with the new cases under preliminary analysis in the month it is scheduled to be heard. And finally, a list of continued <coughs> or held cases that will not be heard during the current month be posted under preliminary analysis with their petition numbers contained in the title for easy reference. Thank you for your time and consideration of this proposal. Thank you very much. Are there any other speakers? Yes, there are. The next speaker is Briani Perkins. As you're coming up, uh, Commissioner Cupid wanted to make just one other, just a point of clarification and earlier comment. Thank you, Chair. Excuse me. Thank you, Chairman. When we reviewed item number two for tab six with respect to the Riverside Area Urban Redevelopment Plan, I just wanted to clarify that we are delaying consideration of this item, not necessarily removing this from any further consideration. Thank you, Thank Chairman. you, I appreciate it. Very good point, very good point. Sorry, ma'am. Okay. Greetings, Board of Commissioners. My name is Brian Perkins, and I'm a freshman at Purple High School as a math student. I live on Six Flash Drive in Austell, Georgia, where the Honorable Lisa Cupid is my commissioner. I, I am here to request that there be a workforce development center located on Six Flash Drive. The workforce center will allow for youth to look for jobs, research careers, search for schools, scholarships, and enrichment programs. This would be a great asset for the community, along with South Cobb Recreation Center, Epic Center, and Keyser Village Apartment Complex, where positive programs take place. I am willing to assist to make sure this happen. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Great, great, great recommendation. Next speaker, please. Wanda Anthony. Good evening, everyone. I'm in Commissioner District 4, and um, my main concerns are, I think that we have in all these plans, these builders, the contractors come in, we have kids, we have young adults that really, they need jobs. Even if we can get some of these builders to hire them and let them just, you know, even if they have to take away debris, do something, give it to the community. And we have so many kids walking around, they need jobs. And I, I mean, I've been, a, I've been a resident of Cobb County ever since elementary. And I never heard of a mentor. I never heard of this organization until now. My kids grew up in Cobb County. This is my first time hearing about it. And I just think that it's very important that when we have these planners, they come in and they make bids, they need to say what they can come and do for the community and also bring our kids into work. Because our young adults, they do need jobs. They do because it would give them a meaning for life. So my suggestion is we try to offer more to our young adults. I really came tonight, I'm gonna be honest, was for crime in our areas. You know, and I realized we wasn't speaking on that. That will come another time. You will see my face again. Okay, thank you and have a good day. Thank you, ma'am. Next speak, uh, the, the last speaker is Ben Williams. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, How are you, Commissioners. I'm Ben Williams. <clears throat> Excuse me. I reside at 5307 Elsie Lane, Mableton, Georgia. I am president of the Cobb County chapter of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference and also one of the organizers of Citizens for Government Transparency. A couple things I'd like to at least or, uh, speak on tonight. <clears throat> one has to do with uh, a topic that we brought to the board's attention uh, last year, and it had to do with ethics in, in government. Uh, we presented to uh, the commissioners uh, a paper where we laid out concerns and made several recommendations regarding the functioning 
of our Board of Ethics. And on every occasion, <coughs> members of Citizens for Government Transparency have met when the Board of Ethics has met. And uh, uh, <coughs> in earnest, we have been able to see some change, all the way to the point where one member of the board stated loudly and publicly that he understands that there's a difference between canons of law and canons of ethics. And that is their charge. I want to commend the chairman for action uh, that you recently took, sir, to engage or, uh, someone to work with you to help you with your public communications and interactions. Commend you for that. My recommendation is that as we've watched our Board of Commissioners strongly recommend that in addition to having legal counsel available to you, that you consider engaging a professional ethicist to support you and work with you as you engage in your deliberations and come to decisions. In the absence of that, continuing on a path uh, that you are on, you will possibly continue to be complicit in breaches of ethics, either because you, you don't know which anyone can do, or in fact, you may, you, you know, you may be considered to be uh, negligent. So the recommendation is that the board strongly consider engaging a professional ethicist to at least provide for you some guidance. The other point uh, I'd like to bring to your attention <clears throat> is the matter of cameras on cops. Um, we have had a good working relationship with our law enforcement people. Chief Hauser, Public Safety Director Heath, a uh, number of the chiefs around Cobb County have been open to us as we have sought opportunity to sit down and to talk with them and to also to continue to provide for them our support uh, for them as they continue to work to make sure our community is safe. Uh, <clears throat> Cameras in cars are helpful. They're not the whole solution, just as cameras on cops would not be the whole solution. But it's our view that it is certainly a major step in the right directions. You know, I'm extremely pleased to, that one of our municipalities has, in fact, found its way through the thickets of all that's related to uh, equipping uh, our, our police officers with, with cameras. Uh, that's commendable. Uh, I would ask that the board uh, give some consideration to supporting that there are our police officers in Cobb County be equipped with uh, cameras as a part of protecting themselves as well as citizens. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, sir. There are no more speakers. That takes us to consent agenda number eight. Oh, I'm sorry. Commissioner Ott wanted to make a brief um, comment. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I just uh, just wanted to make a quick comment um, in reference to um, Jill Flam's comments. Um, since I am the liaison to community development, good for you, and I have the longest <laughs> list of what she's talking about, and I'm also the liaison to IS, I will offer um, to the board that I will sit, get with Rob and John Peterson and we'll take a look at um, what needs to be done and we'll bring it to the county manager. Perfect. Thank you for doing that. Tab 8, Consent Agenda, are there any comments or questions regarding it? If not, I'll bring forward a motion that we approve the Consent Agenda as revised and, author and authorized execution of the necessary documents by the appropriate county personnel. Second. Any comments? Call the question. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you very much for helping us move that along so quickly. Tab 9, Transportation Agency. Director. Mr. Chairman, County Commissioners, and County Manager, our first agenda item tonight is to approve project number E7200 TO number 01 to the 2014 Master Task Order contract with Kimley Horn and Associates for engineering design of Castile Road sidewalk. This is an approved school related Safe Routes to School project in the sidewalks component 
of the 2011 Splice Transportation Improvements Program. We request that the Board of Commissioners approve project number E7200-TO01 to the 2014 Master Task Order Contract with Kimley Horn & Associates in an amount not to exceed $94,295 for engineering design of Castile Road sidewalk. Thank you, Commissioner Weatherford. Yeah, push Sorry, the other button. button. Yeah, <laughs> I voted. Laurie, where's Laurie? <laughs> Laurie, <laughs> I got clear that now. Left hand is Mike. Right hand <laughs> is voting. If you could put that little thing at home somewhere, so <laughs> <I'm> a... <laughs> the black. You got green, black, and red. The green. I make is a motion yes. to approve as presented, sir. Second. <laughs> Any comments? <laughs> call the question over here. Oh. Bob, there you go. Green. Good job. 5 0, the motion passes. Thank you. Next time, I'm going home. To approve it. supplemental agreement number one to the 2012 Master Task Order contract with Reynolds, Smith and Hills for engineering design of Pittner Road over Little Alatoona Creek bridge replacement. Pittner Road over Little Alatoona Creek is an approved project in the bridge rehabilitation and replacement component of the 2011 Splice Transportation Improvements Program. As the project developed and environmental permits were undertaken, identification of a portion of historic bridge remnant requiring additional documentation created the need to expand the original scope. We request the Board of Commissioners approve supplemental agreement number one to the 2012 Master Task Order contract with Reynolds, Smith & Hills in an amount not to exceed $11,048 for engineering <coughs> design of Pittner Road over Little Alatoona Creek Bridge replacement. Commissioner Weatherford. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve amendment as presented by Director DeMasio. There's a motion, there's a second, any comment? Call the question. This one carries 5-0. Item 3, please. To approve supplemental agreement number 1 to the 2014 Master Task Order contract with Gresham, Smith & Partners for engineering services of I-75, Circle 75 ramp. This project consists of the concept development of a separate ramp diverging from the I-75 southbound off-ramp to Windy Hill Road, which would pass under Windy Hill Road where the existing loop ramp is located. It would further cross the Windy Hill Road southbound on-ramp to I-75 where a new bridge or underpass would be constructed. This ramp would continue southward curving west to intersect Circle 75 directly opposite Herodium Way. Through coordination with the Georgia Department of Transportation and the I-75 Managed Lanes Design Build Team, it was determined that changes in the design of the I-75 Managed Lanes project to the I-75 southbound off-ramp to Windy Hill Road would be needed. Therefore, analysis of these changes would be required for the I-75 Circle 75 ramp to be feasible and compatible with the Managed Lane project. We request the Board of Commissioners approve supplemental agreement number one to the 2014 Master Task Order contract with Gresham Smith & Partners in an amount not to exceed $23,629 for engineering services of I-75 Circle 75 ramp. Motion to approve. Second. To approve change order number one final to the contract with Glosson Enterprises LLC for construction of South Gordon Road sidewalk. This is an approved school related safe routes to school project in the sidewalks component of the 2011 Splice Transportation Improvements Program. We request the Board of Commissioners approve change order number one final to the contract with Glosson Enterprises with a savings to the project in the amount of $31,930.59 for construction of South Gordon Road sidewalk. Yes, in fact, we have a champion for this sidewalk here by the elementary school in the audience, which is Ms. Delancey, and we appreciate you um, bringing that to our attention and I'm grateful for the sidewalk being built. That make a motion to approve. Second. Any comments? Call the question. Motion carries 5-0. Item 405, please. To approve an intergovernmental agreement with the City of Kennesaw for thoroughfare improvements at the intersection of SR3 US 41 Cobb Parkway at Mac Dobbs Road, Rutledge Road. The department has received a quick response project request from the Georgia Department of Transportation to add an exclusive left turn lane, a through lane, and a right turn lane on Mac Dobbs Road at the intersection of SR3 US 41 Cobb Parkway with funding assistance through the local maintenance and improvement grant LMIG program. We request that the Board of Commissioners approve an intergovernmental agreement with the City of Kennesaw for thoroughfare improvements at the intersection of SR3 US 41 Cobb Parkway at Mac Dobbs Drive, Rutledge Road in a form similar to the attached and as approved by the County Attorney's Office. Thank you. Commissioner Weatherford. Mr. Chairman, I move we approve intergovernmental agreement with the City of Kennesaw as presented. Second. Motion to say any comments? Call the question. 
Motion carries 5-0. Next item, please. To approve an intergovernmental agreement with the City of Kennesaw for thoroughfare improvements at the intersection of SR3 US 41 Cobb Parkway at Watts Drive Pine Mountain Court. The department has received a quick response project request from the Georgia Department of Transportation to add an exclusive left turn lane, a through lane, and right turn lane on Pine Mountain Court at the intersection of SR3 US 41 Cobb Parkway with funding assistance through the Local Maintenance and Improvement Grant LMIG program. We request that the Board of Commissioners approve an intergovernmental agreement with the City of Kennesaw for thoroughfare improvements at the intersection of SR3 US 41 Cobb Parkway at Watts Drive Pine Mountain Court in a form similar to the attached and as approved by the County Attorney's Office. Thank you. Commissioner Weatherford. Mr. Chairman, I move we approve the intergovernmental agreement with Kennesaw regarding this project. All right, second. We'll do the second. Any comments? Call the question. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you, Director. Tab 10, Public Services Agency, one item. Mr. Cannon. Chairman, Commissioners, County Manager, tonight we have one item. Um, we ask that the Board of Commissioners approve a contract with the McKellen Group LLC in an amount not to exceed $1,689,202 for the demolition of existing buildings and construction of new, two new tennis court buildings at Fair Oaks Park and Sweetwater Park under the 2011 Park SPLOS program. Please authorize the corresponding budget transactions and further authorize the chairman to execute the necessary documents. Thank you. Who would like to take the lead? Weatherford has been doing such a great job this far. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Weatherford. Thank you. Uh, these are 2011 SPLOS projects as outlined and uh, I had the honor of going out with uh, Director Cannon to view this particular project. Um, there have not been a lot of improvements since the 70s. It's well needed and it's a great project. I move that we uh, approve this motion as presented. Because I agree and know this will be a valued asset at Sweetwater Park. Second. Thank you. Any comments? Call the question. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you, Mr. Thank Cannon. You. Tab 11, support services, two items. Good evening, John. Stephen Chairman, Commissioner, County Manager. Our first item deals with the 2011 SPLOS for the Health Department. It's a supplemental agreement to the architect's contract for the health department project. And it consists of two portions. The first portion is to, um, to make the change directive number four in the amount of $2,237 part of this supplemental agreement. The second portion is for some additional work that will be constructed in the future. And the health department is gonna provide $62,506 to pay for that engineering now. And at some future date, this will be part of the 2016 SPLOST. When the county decides that that is the priority for this project, then this money will be paid back by the county to the health department. So the two projects together add up to $64,743. And the department recommends that the commissioners approve supplemental agreement number four to the contract with Piper O'Brien Hair Architects in the amount of $64,743 for the architectural engineering services related to the 2011 SPLOS and future 2016 SPLOS projects at the Health Department Headquarters and Health Department Annex located on County Services Parkway. Authorize the corresponding budget transactions and further authorize the chairman to execute the necessary documents. Thank you. Commissioner Ott, you're the liaison for this agency. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Now I make a motion to approve um, item number one. Second. Any comments? Call the question. Motion carries 5-0. <coughs> Thank you. John, next item, please. Second item is also for the 2011 SPLOS. This is wrapping up the contract for the new exterior glass and frames at 10 East Park Square. That uh, This is a $10,000 supplemental agreement bringing the total contract to 814,641 and we recommend the board approve supplemental agreement number two with glass systems in the amount of ten thousand dollars for miscellaneous carpentry work dealing with the intersecting of the walls on the exterior windows on tennis park square authorize the corresponding budget transactions and further authorize the chairman to execute necessary documents thank you commissioner Hunt. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I know anyone that has any business on the square is ecstatic that the gold windows are gone. So make a motion to approve this item. Second. Motion and second. Any comments? Call the question. 
Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, John. Thank you, Commissioners. Tab 12, Public Safety, one item. Good evening, Chairman, Director Commissioners. Heaton. County Manager. Um, coming to you to authorize the transfer of funds for the purchase of one heavy-duty commercial truck for hazardous materials re support response. In December of 2014, the Board of Commissioners approved uh, for the purchase of one uh, replacement hazardous material pro uh, apparatus and this was uh, pursuant to the 2011 SPLOST. Uh, the amount was $292,959. Uh, we have identified a vehicle through the uh, VT Hackney Company, and uh, Cobb Fire wishes to transfer existing funds within the Cobb Fire and Emergency Services SPLOST programs for the approved purchase of this apparatus. Uh, we will be using existing funds in the amount of $60,000 and asking that funding be available through the following transfer uh, of, from accounts uh, that were also in the SPLOS. That includes e EPS 31, which was station paving, and then EPS 22, which was specialty equipped vehicles. Uh, these uh, programs were <coughs> met. Uh, the, the programs that we had listed for the stations needed in paving were done. This was savings in those two programs. So we're asking to combine those two savings with the original 60,000 and therefore coming to you to authorize the transfer of those funds for one heavy duty commercial truck for hazardous material support response in the amount of $232,959 and further authorize the corresponding budget transactions. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Weatherford. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I make a motion that we approve the transfer of supplies funds for the purchase of a hazmat response truck. Thank you, sir. I voted already. Multiple seconds. <laughs> Call the question. <laughs> Motion carries 5 0. Thank you, sir. Laurie, Laurie, Laurie. <laughs> Tab 13, Community Development Agency. Welcome back, Mr. Johnson. Yes, sir. Dan Johnson, Cobb County Community Development. I am here I'm requesting you to adopt a resolution. Uh, to approve the update of the historic Mableton Preservation and Improvement Plan Livable Centers Initiative. And if I may just go for a very brief update of what this is for those that are not aware of that. Um, just going to kind of talk about the update requirements, what we did for public participation, and then anything new in the implementation plan. By way of introduction, uh, the, this, this is the Livable Centers Initiative. This is a program developed by the Atlanta Regional Commission that awards competitive grants to communities to plan um, for um, growth and development in their particular areas, particularly growth and development that would result in higher density mixed use type developments. Um, as part of going through this program, we are uh, eligible to then compete for transportation funding to help with um, non-motorized transportation improvements <coughs> that create a more walkable environment in the area where the study was done. If you, by participating in the LCI program, we are required to do five and ten year updates as part of the plans to keep them active and valid. This is our second major update to the plan, or second minor update to the plan. Our original plan was approved in 2001 by the Board of Commissioners. That plan resulted in the construction of the South Cobb Regional Library on Clay Road. Uh, then the initial plan was updated in 2009. At that time, we envisioned the Floyd Road improvements, which we are seeing going in right now, which we are very excited about, as well as doing an initial expansion of the LCI boundary northward of Clay Road to incorporate where the post office is going up to where these axes is. Part of what we have to do for a five-year update is we have to evaluate what we've done, what's been completed, new, new ideas for the area, what has not been done. Um, we have to look at a new five-year update for how we're going to pursue this over the next five years, and then, of course, ask the board to approve a resolution submitting this to the Atlanta Regional Commission. Overall, I think we've done pretty well. We had 36 total projects. 42% of those are, are complete. 19% are in progress. 11% are no longer relevant, and 28% are not completed. Um, the, some of the key tasks that we've completed over the years are the Floyd Road improvements, uh, the Mabel and Town Center study, which created the new illustrative master plan, uh, the new form-based code, form-based redevelopment district for the Mableton area, um, the partnership with the school board on the new Mableton Elementary School that was in compliance uh, with that overall um, illustrative master plan, um, and the Mableton Park and Ride Lot, which DOT helped construct through a grant received through the Livable Centers Initiative Program. And I would mention that this was one of the uh, drivers or idea formulating to reinvent and reinvigorate 
the former group known as the South Cobb Development Authority, which is now called the South Cobb Redevelopment Authority. By way of public participation, we had an excellent community meeting down in the Mableton area held at Lions Club Park. It was very well attended by about 60 individuals who came out for the Mableton community to participate. And we really went through what's called a strength and weakness analysis, a SWOT analysis with the community to get an understanding of where the community feels that they're heading and how that could implement and that those ideas that were formulated from the community then resulted in new implement implementation items which are contained in this document. Looking out for the implementation plan for the new five-year work program, there are a lot of transportation initiatives, and that is important because the majority of what comes out of the LCI study is our ability to go for transportation grants. So our coordination with DOT is very important in this regard. Some of the items that are on the new five-year implementation program is the continuation of the Floyd Road improvements, the Walker Drive extension, and the Town Square, which will be constructed in front of the Mableton Elementary School. For housing initiatives, we'll investigate funding opportunities to help promote um, and it advertise the form-based code, which could help the private sector in redevelopment of the Mableton area. And then other initiatives, such as improvements to the Mabel House Complex, the South Cobb Regional Library, and uh, doing a better job of marketing and branding of the great community that we have here in South Cobb. With that, I will be happy to answer any questions that you may have, but I would also ask that you pre please um, adopt the resolution updating the Mapleton LCI, authorizing its submittal to the Atlanta Regional Commission, and authorizing the chairman to execute any necessary documents. Thank you. Commissioner Cupid. Thank you, Chairman. I'd like to thank Community Development for all of your work in updating this plan. It is positive to see that so many of the initiatives through the initial LCI have started to come into fruition, and as was shared, we will see the continuation of that with the Floyd Road project, and certainly with the passage of the 2016 SPLOS, we will get improvements to other infrastructure in the area, inclusive of the library and the um, Maple House complex. Um, with that, I ask the commissioners to support this adoption of the resolution to approve the update with a, um, my motion to approve. Second. Any comments? Call the question. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. Thank you, Dana. Tab 14, Director DeMassimo. Mr. Chairman, County Commissioners, and County Manager. Our item is to approve amendments to the Cobb County policy for the Cobb County Airport McCollum Field Airport Advisory Board. The role of the Airport Advisory Board is to act in an advisory capacity to the Board of Commissioners on subjects within the scope of the Airport Advisory Board's responsibility. It is envisioned that a revised policy may help clarify the membership of the Airport Advisory Board to include individual appointments by each commissioner. We request that the Board of Commissioners approve amendments to the Cobb County policy for the Cobb County Airport McCollum Field Airport Advisory Board to revise membership, the manner in which board members are appointed, and initial terms of office and authorize the chairman to execute the necessary documents. Thank you very much. Commissioner Ott, you were the one that uh, brought this forward. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just kind of a little bit of background for the folks in the audience. I know we talked about this yesterday. Um, during my time on the Airport Advisory Board, um, we continually had problems getting uh, quorums just because of the, the reduced number of people on the board. And in talking with Carl and, and some of the other members, I saw the opportunity with some slots that were not going to be filled because um, the, the fixed base operator, there were two and it went down to one and some other things changed. So um, as you know, I talked to you about trying to expand and fill in those slots and give each one of the commissioners an appointment to the airport advisory board because the reality is the airport has really expanded beyond just being a resource for that part of the county and I think is really a resource for the whole county. So I'll make a motion to approve. Um, Agenda item number one. Thank you. And I'll second that motion as presented. We appreciate it. Any other comments from the board? Call the question. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you, Director. Thank you, Commissioner Rott, for bringing that forward. I bet you thought this would never come. Senior Judge Steve Schuster, we're glad you're here. Uh, well, thank tab, you. Tab 15. Uh, Mr. Chair, Commissioners, and County Manager, this is in. somewhat new for me. <laughs> and that we've changed the two-step process to a one-step process. 
where we're asking you to approve the 3% raise for the Superior Court and the District Attorney. In, in the past, you approved it, and then we went to the legislature, but the legislature has now allowed us just to come to you. So we'd ask that you approve it, and I'm here to answer any questions about it. Are there any questions for the senior judge or chief the chief judge. judge? Excuse me. I know I have no hair and I'm turning gray, but let's stay with chief. Uh, uh, well, judge Groves made it clear to me I was not to call her senior judge either. So um, are there any comments? If not, I'll bring forward a recommendation the Board of Commissioners authorize the proposed raise to, the, to be consistent with Cobb County's policy of giving 3% raise to all county employees further authorize corresponding budget transaction. Is that enough, Mr. Hankerson? Yes, sir. Thank you. Second. I'll bring that forward. Is the second any comment? Call the question. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Thank you. Senior Judge, thank you. <laughs> Sixth time, no, takes so long. Uh, yeah. Uh, tab 16, the second public comment. We have none. Great. Tab 17. All right, so, commissioners, as you know, we've been um, waiting ourselves through these appointment issues. There are some that are announcements, there are some require a vote. On your agenda book, you have 14 items. Item 12 has been repulled by Commissioner Ott and will not be considered tonight. So item 12 is gone. Items four and seven do not require a vote, and those are items presented by Commissioner Weatherford and will be considered in a moment. It is our intent to have one agenda item which covers those that require a vote and those that require announcement so that they can be included in the meeting's uh, minutes and for clarity. So I want to bring forward a one collective vote in gross to approve items one, two, three, five, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, thirteen, and fourteen as presented in gross. Is that appropriate? Second. I have multiple seconds. Thank you so much. Call the question. Motion carries fourteen to zero. So with that, Commissioner Weatherford, there's two announcements you can make on four. Item four and item seven, please. Thanks, sir. I'd like to announce the reappointment of Stephen Askey to the Electrical Advisory Board and uh, make a motion to do so. Nope, just an announcement. Okay, I'm announcing it. Okay. okay. Item seven, please. Also, would like to announce the reappointment of Charles Kastner to the Board of Adjustments and Appeals. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Are there any other announcements? Yes. Well, Commissioner Ott, we'll begin with you. Okay, uh, I would like to announce that I am appointing Brian Newsom to the Airport Advisory Board. Thank you. Any other announcements? Yes. Commissioner Burrell. Um, I would first like to recognize Ms. Helen Story, who is in the audience. She was just appointed to the um, Behavioral Health Region 1 uh, Development Board. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Helen, for your service. And I'd also like to appoint Amy Rowe to the Airport Advisory Board. Okay. Now, if I could, thank you for that announce those two announcements. I just want to make a point to the remaining three commissioners that in the item we approved where we approved the revised appointment scheduling for the airport, um, it was in that it was indicated that each resident member shall demonstrate knowledge, training, experience, at least in one of the following areas, aviation and finance. Um, I'd like to see that we balance that. So your appointment has experience in... Um, my appointment is a private pilot and owns his own airplane. <laughs> so that would be aviation. Mine is a certified pilot too. So that would be aviation. So we need to look for some folks in okay. finance. I've thought someone in aviation as well. That at Bob finance, okay? <laughs> you and I are gonna have to need to get a real Carter. good one, don't I? Yeah, you do. One. We'll, okay. So we'll find someone in uh, finance. Um, well, Mr. Chairman, if, if it'll help, my appointment, besides being a um, private pilot, also owns his own business, a construction business. So that helps. So I think he that does counts. have some finance. I figure anybody who owns a plane is pretty good in finance. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, not necessarily because they would rent it. It's a whole lot cheaper. That's true. There is Delta. Um, <laughs> he didn't know one. He just rents it. Okay. Are we done with that? 
All right, so we're done with tab, whatever that is. We're moving to tab 18, Commissioner Comments. We're gonna be with, begin with Commissioner Ott. Okay, um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first um, item I have is uh, just a reminder, and last meeting I showed this flyer, and this actually was in the Marietta Daily Journal this morning. Um, and just a reminder, before our next meeting, um, the Community Development Block Grant Program Office will be having two preparation workshops. The first one is on Wednesday, January 28th at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and that's at the Charles uh, D. Schweitzer Public Library, which is on Roswell Street here in Marietta. And then the second one will be Wednesday, February 4th at 2 o'clock, and that's at the Smyrna Community Center, which is a 200 Village Green Circle in Smyrna. Um, and then the next one, I'll, I'll bring them up as they go on. But basically, there's a total of seven meetings throughout the county in the different districts for the various nonprofits to learn about the application process that the CDBG program office uses um, in distributing the, the HUD funds. Um, also, um, the first Monday and first Thursday of February on uh, my television show um, this coming month, um, I met with the legislators. Senator Hunter Hill came from the Senate and then uh, Representative Sharon Cooper and Matt Dollar from the House of Representatives. So if you would like to hear about some upcoming legislation and what might be going on in this session, um, the show is on at 8 o'clock, the first Monday and first Thursday. And then finally, I have now the county manager talked a little bit about what uh, the board did on Saturday. It was a little bit cold, but we had a tremendous turnout. And I've got a short video here just to show um, the new ballpark, which is the Chipper Jones Field, uh, which was totally renovated by the Atlanta Braves. And was, the ribbon was cut on Saturday. And this was in addition to um, over $2.9 million that the county has spent with the 2011 SPLOS for improvements to Fuller's Park. And for all of our clarification, those are called the heavy hitters. Thank That's you. all I have. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Burrow. Thank you. Uh, not only did we have an eventful day at Fuller's Park on Saturday, even with the cold weather, it was a great event, um, but also last week the Atlanta Braves and Homer, as part of the uh, 2015 Braves Caravan Tour, visited Mountain View Elementary in District 3. And we had Brave stars Todd Cunningham, Braden Schluber, James Russell, and Stephen Janis all attended and met with teachers and students. And I appreciate them letting me be a part of the day's festivities. Um, and also, thank you to Parks and the Braves for uh, the Fuller's Park event um, last Saturday. Uh, last Friday night, I had the honor of attending the Special Olympics for the state of Georgia held at our own Cobb County Civic Center. I think, is this the, what number year? 23rd. 23rd year it, that Cobb has hosted it there. Um, and it was a great event, opening ceremony. So I'm sure the following two days of events went well and congratulate all the winners. Um, on, going on now is the 4-H plant sale, and you can learn more about it at cobextension.com. My first uh, town hall of this year will be Thursday, February 19th from 6.30 to 8 p.m. at the East Cobb Senior Center, 3332 Sandy Plains Road. And the spotlight will be on the Georgia DOT Express Lanes Project. So I hope you can all come out and attend. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Weatherford. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I uh, would like to announce that the chairman will be holding a town hall meeting in District 1 at Kenworth Park at the North Cobb Senior Center Thursday at 630. Is that correct, sir? That's correct, sir. Good. Uh, part of that town hall will, how, will be how to use buttons and microphones <laughs> for the newest commissioner. Also would like to know how Commissioner Ott gets a TV show. Mr. Quigley. Who has communications? Is that 8 in the morning or 8 at night? Oh, that's too late. Sorry. Thank you. Nothing, Thank you. Nothing for it. It's called, what is it called? Talk to. Two Talk with Bob Ott. You know, number two, District two. two. District Two, Two Talk. Yeah. <laughs> Commissioner Cupid. Yes. Thank you, Chairman. A few announcements. Um, between January 29th and the 31st at 3 p.m., Pebble Brook School of Performing Arts will be sh showcasing Tarzan the Musical. And I encourage residents participating. I think we have someone who's a part of the arts program. Are you in the musical? Very good. Why don't we stand up and recognize you? You could go out and see her on the 29th. <laughs> We're you. pretty safe to say you're not Tarzan, right? <laughs> I mean, this woman is amazing. Not only is she in a musical, but she is advocating for jobs in her community. I mean, what is next? I think you're going to come and get my seat, huh? <laughs> I like it. Um, also, we have a newly erect state representative, Erica Thomas, and she will be holding a coffee and conversation at the Riverside Epicenter located at 135 Riverside Parkway. And that will be this Saturday, January 31st at 10 a.m. And on Tuesday, February 3rd, in kicking off our marketing and branding study for the South Cobb area, which was referred to in the Mableton LCI, we will have a community engagement party at the South Cobb Recreation Center held at 875 Six Flags Drive. And we're looking for community feedback and for you to meet your community partners. And from what I understand, there'll be some giveaways and also some, some food and just good times to be had. Finally, I will be giving a District 4 address, which will be sponsored by South Cobb Rotary on Thursday, February 12th. And that will be held at Austell Presbyterian Village at 2000 East West Connector in Austell. And there'll be two times for that. There'll be a time at noon and also a time for 630 um, and encourage you to attend. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have two things I want to mention. This morning I had the privilege and honor uh, to represent Commissioner Ott and the board at a uh, ribbon cutting for J.E. Dunn Construction who has opened their new facility. Uh, this is a relocated a company that was renting a facility outside the county and they have brought 100 jobs to Cobb, specifically to Commissioner Ott's district and we, uh, we had a great time cutting that ribbon this morning and welcomed them to our community. And the other is that I would like to ask the, the community to remember in their prayers and thoughts Commissioner Bill Cooper, who served in, on his board several years ago, who has a significant serious illness and is in Kennestone and needs our sincerest prayers and thoughts for, for his recovery and for his families. So, Mr. County Manager, anything else? No, sir, With that, we are adjourned. Thank you.
to see it.